All right, guys, welcome back to Crypto Art Australia. Uh, my name's Matt. This is Mitch. How you going, mate? Yep, hi, Matt. How you going? Good to see you again. Yep, last uh, video, a few videos, we've been talking about price and fundamentals. Um, in particular, last video, we talked about Ethereum yep. and the upcoming hard forks. Today, we just wanted to concentrate in, on uh, Ethereum Classic. Um, obviously, it's trending news, but it's important for the community to um, gain a deeper understanding of what's been happening. So there's been some news lately with Ethereum Classic. Mitch, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so just give a bit of a background of Ethereum Classic, I think, to begin yeah. with, is that, uh, you know, it came into existence because essentially members of the Ethereum community would not uh, approve the hard fork mm -hmm. for grounds of the uh, immutability issue. Yep. And, um, and when did that occur? Oh, this is back in 2017. 2017, yeah, so a couple of years around ago. Mid, yeah, around yeah. mid-2017, it occurred. Um, so, uh, uh, originally, like, Bitcoin and Ethereum were born based on, like, on this principle, according to which blockchain, you know, cannot be changed. Mm -hmm. For a matter of principles, they just decided to keep using the uh, unforked version yep. of uh, Ethereum from this moment, like from that moment, uh, it's when you've had the two different blockchains, you've got Ethereum and you've got Ethereum Classic. Um, but I think the main thing what we've seen since 2018, around around uh, April 2018, you've actually seen the rise of Ethereum Classic. Uh, so you've actually seen that uh, A with the, the, the dev teams that's been going on and the actual community, you've actually seen them uh, unite as well and uh, pretty much just rethink their goals uh, and their future. And they've actually worked pretty hard last year with regards to the, the development side yep. of things with the, the cryptocurrency. And if you look at their roadmap um, for 2018, the Emerald Wallet was created for mobile. You've got... Um, new improved stated B layer, you've yeah. developments all through 2018 and then into 2019, looking at scalability and um, side chains. So they've got a lot of um, targets in mind for 2019. Yeah, um, and a also, uh, concise road, uh, roadmap. Yep, sure. and you can find that on their website. It's very easy to find. Um, it gives you a quick rundown and of course you can look at the white paper as well. But um, what we wanted to talk about today with regards to so it's a good introduction about Ethereum Classic. Was there's been some updates and developments in um, things happening with the Ethereum Classic community, and we'll talk about this more objectively. So we, we'll sort of give our opinions in a second. But here you can find on Altcoin News, Ethereum Classic loses top one million dollars uh, after 51% attack due to Coinbase research. Um, so it's currently the 18th largest cryptocurrency, Ethereum Classic. By market cap. Yeah has become the latest blockchain to succumb to a 51% attack where in a malicious miner accrues a majority of the network hash power and uses it to rewrite recent blockchain data. And of course, the, there's some reasons behind this why um, someone would want to attack the network uh, would be to make a profit. So of course, um, spending some money on advert advertising and, and and also putting together some a pool of people to hack the network in order to make profit. Um, according to a statement published on Tuesday, the attacker absconded with 54,000 ETC worth around $200,000. Um, notably, the exchange advised Ethereum Classic to adopt a radical change from proof of work consensus to proof of stake to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. The, the best way for investors and uh also to uh, infuse this of ETC is actually to pretty much follow the Ethereum Classic uh, Twitter page. Yep, absolutely. Um, so I think, uh, from my view, I think Ethereum Classic's done the right uh, the right thing here by not jumping into uh, and making rash decisions based on uh, one attack. Mm, absolutely. Um, so they've actually listed, a, as you can see, they've actually listed a set of priorities and I think the, the first priority there that that I can see is a dual post mortem of the recent attacks. So essentially, they're doing the the taking the right step there and the, the right approach to understanding what what's happened. Mm. 
And, um, uh, you know, there's so a sort of 10, 10 gen. Once they have a thorough understanding of what happened, they can actually then uh, come up with strategies on how to mitigate Prevent that yeah. for the, in future. So I think the, the second point there that they make is a, uh, is uh, creating a, a monitoring and alert system for ETC, so attacks may be seen faster to alert system. Mm -hmm. So from my understanding, uh, just by reading Twitter, just be just by scrolling through the feeds, I think this attack actually happened on Saturday. Yeah. And not finding out about it, I don't. From my understanding, uh, the Fear and Classic community weren't notified, or Fear and Classic uh, weren't notified until the Monday. Yep. So there's been a, a big delay there. Yeah, so it seems like a planned attack. Yeah, it yeah. does. Um, uh, point freeze, uh, continue the recommendation for users and operators to use a significantly higher confirmation time. Uh, and, I, and I noticed that they've been recommending to yeah, that's, exchanges. That's what, and, that's uh, what Zachary Belfort has been recommending. He's one of the... Uh, ETC developers mm -hmm. has actually worked on it. So, um, They've been recommending some of the big players for ETC have been recommending the exchanges to increase um, confirmation times for the transactions yeah. on the on the chain. And uh, four, study the possibility of implementing deep reorg protection. Last point down there says we will not reorg the chain or revert the events on the chain under any circumstance. So they're, a, they're sticking to their philosophy, aren't they? Uh, it's a key thing in Fear and Classic is the, the immutability of it. Mm. And they're really sticking to the foundations and, and protocols and, and staying true to the community. So with that last point. Um, so, yeah, okay. So we have an, a better understanding now of, of what's happened. Um, you know, it, it brings about some issues with vulnerability. Um, but... You know, obviously, it's a good step in the right direction for the Ethereum Classic team to actually release um, a series of uh, yeah, I, I, I think along the way, I think they've been very transparent with yeah. the community about what's actually happening, which is positive and which is what you want within a decentralized currency. And you, you can want, see you that transparency. You can see that it hasn't affected the price in any way. Um, the price has stayed similarly um, sort of same similar point to where it, it was before the attack. So you can see that there's a lot of faith in investors and the community and, and people to keep it afloat. Um, and that's really shows strength with Ethereum Classic. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Is there anything else you want to add, Mitch? I think uh, it's actually important. I think it's actually interesting to look at what Donald McIntyre was actually talking about mm -hmm. regarding ETC and his views on why it will come back stronger. Yep. And I think that's a, you know, we can focus on the negatives, but I think it's a, there's still a lot of positives yep. surrounding ETC and the philosophy around it. And uh, so what Donald goes into is actually talks about, uh, you know, what, why there's still an opportunity for ETC. Um, I think point number one, he actually talks about the proof of work. So uh, it's, Turned complete blockchain with the cryptocurrency and smart contracts, but fully integrated in, in the base layer. Uh, point two just talks about the value proposition is different and more secure uh, than all competitors, as Bitcoin is not turning complete and requires side chains to smart contracts, and all the other turning complete blockchains are either P, uh, so POS, which is proof of stake. Or some other BFT consensus mechanisms, some including treasuries and voting, which are all significantly less secure than proof of work. Uh, point three is uh, I think this is one of the key points that Donald actually talks about is uh, talking about the ETC ecosystem is uh, still focus on the immutability, mate, mm -hmm. as a core value. Yep. So, not having any formal governance mechanism in place and essentially guaranteeing. Uh, the uh, decision making process is uh, just through uh, a free market adoption and the, the network and, and changes. Yep. Uh, the other point Donald talks about is uh, ETC having a fixed monetary policy, so the supply is fixed, whereas yep. we spoke about this on numerous occasions. 
here in the class at, at, at Ethereum, sorry. Um, just es essentially, you can just, uh, they, they, they haven't got that system in place, so they can just up, they, they can change the, uh, the, the policy mm -hmm. as they like. Uh, ETC is un unique and the only blockchain in its niche. I think key point out of all this is uh, point seven, where uh, you know Donald talks about although Bitcoin is highly secure, it is unlikely that the world will use only one base layer blockchain to build all systems on top. Mm. So I think so, I mean, and Donald's actually provided. Yeah, th th these are his opinions, but I think they're, they're actually valid. Why he is still positive, very positive about ETC, and there's you know. There's good, you know, you're going to have these kinds of attacks with decentralized communities and coins. But I think um, it's okay. good to, to have informed people come out and say, well, actually, it still has a future. That's exactly This is just a, set, a setback. You can see it as a setback or you can see it as a, um, a way to build the, the community further. Yeah, and I, I think it's, uh, I think it will come back stronger than what it, than what it was, man. Of course, it is because you had got uh, people within the community that are willing to work hard towards yep. Yep. Uh, it improving the currency. So yep, absolutely. Okay. All right. Thanks for uh, your time, cheers, Mitch. Good, yeah. good to chat. Okay. See That's you right. guys.